So one of the most popular stocks that I've covered on here is TRXC. We've gone over it a lot of times and a lot of other channels have covered it. So I'm gonna cover other stocks in the medical device and robotic surgical genre that might be of interest to you. These are some things that I've been watching for a while now and I think that there's some really, really interesting gems in here and maybe some duds, but they are worth looking at. The global robotic surgery market could be seven billion, could be a hundred billion, some say a couple hundred million. I think that it's nothing but a increasing, increasing industry. It just makes sense. Everything is going that way. And I just don't see how the world will ignore robotic surgery elements in the surgical room. So let's take a look at a couple. First of all, we have Microbot. Microbot Medical is early stage, it's not profitable, and it's a biomedical robot company that is developing Microbots for a system to help treat patients with fluid buildup in the brain. So for example, there's a miniaturized robot capable of navigating and crawling in spaces like blood vessels and the respiratory system. Fully disposable robotic system for use in neurovascular, cardiovascular procedures. It's designed to maneuver guide wires, microcatheters, and over-the-wire devices within the body's vasculature. The system features a unique compact design with the capability to be operated remotely, reduce radiation exposure, and physical strain to the physicians. It would seem that retail investors would want exposure to surgical robots. They have quite a few options. In reality, there's really only a few when it comes to like a pure play surgical robotics stock because what you what we see is a lot of these robotic companies are part of a bigger bigger whole since it is such a new industry and new genre the pure completely pure robotic space is really really small it's usually built out of a patent that another company buys a larger company buys or out of an R&D department that a larger company comes up with so it's really interesting and really hard to find something that's just a pure robotic surgery robotics play even though we're seeing more and more pop up that's why another reason i think that this is a really highly growth industry and also in 2020 due to the virus it's been really really interesting because lots of these surgical device robotic surgical device companies are elective surgeries so a lot of elective surgeries has been down to maximize capacity in hospitals and when electric surgeries elective surgeries go down then the need for this and the use and to be able to demonstrate and sell these products go way down too. So there could be a case made that now might be the time to purchase and to dive into stocks like this because it is constricted right now. Once again, I can't imagine going anywhere. This is not investment advice. This is what I tell myself though. I can't imagine this going anywhere. And I think it would stand to reason that since revenues have been constricted for this last year, and maybe a year plus now as we come into 2021 that it would make sense that the money will flow there again when hospitals are back at regular capacity and when start when things start to operate normally again so it might be a really really great time to get into some of these companies even the ones that are not pure play but the ones that are making really really aggressive overtures and moves into this direction we have the cyber knife and I'm gonna play you a video about the cyber knife because this is one I think is super, super cool and very exciting. I'm going to do a longer in-depth analysis of this too on this channel um, coming up next week, I believe. It's a $198 million company from AccuRay and the stock ticker is A-R-A-Y. It's a robotics platform that delivers radio surgery treatments to cancer tumors anywhere in the body and it pivots and the, the, the video is going to tell you way more than I do but it pivots and it compensates for people moving while getting these radiation treatments and the level of accuracy is supposed to be much much more than the current modality that they have. It uses AI reportedly to help enable its precise treatments with a sub millimeter accuracy in as little as 15 minutes. It also produces non-robotic radiation systems. The company had a backlog of nearly 500 million around this time last year, but it also, which is really excited, entered a joint venture in China with a subsidiary of the country's national nuclear program, the China Isotope and Radiation Corporation. Although the incident of cancer in China is relatively low, fun fact, uh, compared to the United States and Europe, the disease is on the rise, thanks, for, thanks to mostly us in, in the United States, 
exports of our unhealthy diet is going over there and then they're getting more cancer. So the deal could be really, really a game changer for the Accurate, which is slowly growing the revenues over time with you know, 2019 revenues, which is what I like to look at since that was pre, pre-virus, you know, that's the closest kind of thing we have to, to look at, I think, to normalize these P&Ls and these revenues. Um, with 2019 revenues of being around 419 million. And we have, I mean, this is kind of a logical leap for sure, but we have NEO in China too, that we, it's like kind of like the stock market darling this year, or at least it is for me. And, and anything, when you partner up with any sort of Chinese government agency, I just think is just such a huge plus in their corner, right? Like the, the government prints money, I mean, just freaking prints money over there, and I would hazard to say their checks and balance system is probably not as hmm, not as strong as ours. So if they're excited about something, you usually see a whole lot of gasoline thrown on it metaphorically, and it kind of blows up. I mean, kind of some of the bureaucracy and red tape that we deal with here in approvals and in subsidies getting subsidies especially for like the ev market and stuff like that china gets it done in about two seconds so anything that has a successful partnership in china uh with any kind of government agency or any kind of agency that might even be funded by the government which i have a feeling the government has their fingers and everything it just is is a really exciting play for me at least so we can look at the the stock ticker here too yeah so over the last month we really started at about 419 and we're currently at 494 and we can look at the six months i mean it's been nothing but up i mean this is like i said it's been one i've been watching for a while it's it's exciting um year to date you know we had at 38 381 and then we had a massive dip once again kind of all in this industry you see a lot of a lot of dips i mean this is really not on the elective category as the rest of these plays are um but it also just released some really encouraging breast cancer study results. So I'm going to do a whole deep dive into this um, in the next week. And then we have stereotaxis, which is it's arterial, arterial fibrillation. I went to speech uh, class for my R's, like a couple R's in a row. It's very hard for me. A $305 million company called stereotaxis, it's STXS, has developed a robotic magnetic navigation system to treat the arrhythmias like AFib by repairing the electrical circuits of the heart in a procedure called cardiac abla- ablation, ablation, I believe. The company has published more than 400 studies showing its technology, which uses ultra soft and magnetic controlled catheters. It shows that it's safe and more effective than manual procedures. And that's kind of, I mean, like that's another, uh, plus in this whole industry is that since it is so new it's it's not robotic company versus ro- robotic company at this point unless it's like a trxc versus like a intuitive systems at this point i believe it's really robotic surgical implementation versus manual procedures and i feel like that's what's really really exciting because you know it's not who has the better device at this point i mean it is but on a macro level it really is old guard versus new guard which gets me so excited so if you want more about these videos like and subscribe leave a comment let me know what you think uh unless it's mean and then just go away and never come back but let me know what you think i'm gonna, I'm gonna do a deep dive into some of these companies next week and i've gotten a lot of requests to do um, sens and that's going to be coming up as well